we are going to take the next domain that is the domain 6 of CISSP. So this domain is about uh, security assessment and testing. So when we are talking about security assessment and testing, then we can say that uh, it is a very important part of information security and uh, it is very holistic. It means it covers a lot, a lot. Normally we think that uh, security assessment and testing is just about the VAPT, vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. No, it is not so. It covers a lot. So let's have an understanding what exactly CISSP CBK wants you to understand in this particular topic five, uh, topic six of uh, C, uh, domain six of CISSP. So uh, this domain six of CISSP wants you to design and validate assessment, test, and audit strategies. It means you should able to design and validate the assessment, test, and audit strategies, and also you should be able to conduct security control test testing. It means whatever the security controls are there in your environment or in some other environment or the environment which you want to test, you should able to conduct the security uh, testing of those controls, right? And then comes the third topic that is collect security process data. So whatever the security process data is, whether it is in the administrative data or whether it is a technical data, you should able to process that particular data in terms of security, uh, we are talking just. Then comes analyze test output and generate code. Finally, whatever the tests are there, ultimately why we do test? We do the test to get some result, to get some outcome of the same. So here in this particular case, the fifth uh, fourth topic is about that you should able to analyze the output of whatever test you have done. And finally, you should able to compile them in the form of a report, which is easily understandable and also easily readable by the uh, next party. Also, you should able to conduct or facilitate security audit. So you can only facilitate or conduct security audit when you understand what exactly audit is, what are the steps of any audit, what are the requirement of any audit, right? So these are the requirement of topic six. Okay, friends, as you know that the whole CISSP can be divided into 63 topics. So all these 63 different topics are divided into different, different domains, total eight domains are there. So we can say that if this particular topic is covering five, uh, sorry, this particular domain is covering five topics, it means that this particular topics will be of 10 questions. On an average, you will get 10 questions out of this particular domain. So whenever we uh, are going to study about any particular domain, just think in your mind what exactly the importance of that particular domain is, right? In terms of the exam I'm talking about here. So in terms of the exam, 10 questions means if you are able to uh, master this particular domain and it is a very easy domain, I can say, uh, say that, that no new terms are there, nothing new is there, just the old concepts are there, just you need to go through those concepts and it, it is a very easy to master domain. So my recommendation is just master this particular domain. So these are the topics, uh, six, uh, five topics which, were, uh, which are covered in this particular domain, domain six, design and validate, assessment, test and audit study strategies both for internal external and third party then the second topic is about conduct security control testing about it covers the vulnerability assessment penetration testing block reviews synthetic transactions all these things it, it covers then uh, collect security process data uh, some of the topics i want to say that uh, these code review testing misuse case testing test coverage analysis and interface testing you can leave these in this particular for the last domain because these are further repeated in the last domain so better to uh, have better to complete them all together in a single domain itself so i have not covered all these things here like the synthetic transactions code review and testing misuse case testing so because these are the past part of software testing and in software testing also we do some kind of security testing also that's why these parts are covered here but my recommendation is do not cover them here just leave them for the last domain that is the domain 8 so we will cover these topics in the domain 8 for rest of the uh, topics i can say that yes all of them are important like collect security process data what kind of data account management account review process management review key performance kpi and uh, kris backup verification data disaster recovery and business continuity training and awareness so all these uh, subtopics are there in the third topic then we have analyzed test output and generate report. 
and finally conduct or facilitate security audits so these are the five topics of uh, this particular domain right so moving further okay i can say that uh, security assessment means the assessment of the controls which we have implemented or going to implement in our network that's what security assessment means so in detail we can say as per nist i'm uh, giving this definition that security assessment is a test to evaluate the security controls to determine the extent to which the controls are implemented correctly and they are operating as uh, intended and also to check whether they are giving the desired outcome or not okay and all these things all these three things whether they are implemented so in security assessment we will cover three things whether they are implemented correctly or not first thing second whether after implementation whether they are operating as what we thought that they will operate in such and such manner and whether whatever results we thought out of them that we will get these outcomes whether we are getting those results or those outcomes or not so these are the three things which we will test in any security assessment and finally in any security assessment what exactly we are going to do we are going to check the controls which are implemented whether those controls are documented controls or technical controls administrative controls or technical controls we can say so we can say security assessment is a very broad in scope it covers everything from documentation till the technical so everything is covered in security assessment and like it will cover risk assessment also it covers the vulnerability assessment and it also covers threat identification even it will cover the remediation steps also uh, it means we can say the recommendation which we will give finally in the uh, security report assessment report that are also the part of security assessment only so we can say uh, that any security assessment which can check the effectiveness of the controls or which can check for the gaps in the control will come under security assessment category so any kind of assessment which which will check uh, either there is any gap to check whether it will check whether there is any gap in those controls or whether they it will check that there is a missing uh, control or whether those controls are effective or not right so let's have a look on some of the concept of security assessment so they are very broad in scope first thing first concept uh, of security assessment that they are very broad in scope second is they are very comprehensive they cover everything system application environment everything and the outcome of the security assessment will be a report which will make the environment more secure okay right so moving further let's have a understanding of the security assessment so when we are talking about security ass assessment we can say it can be divided into two major pillars one is about the documentation review process and other is about the technical review process so when we are talking about documentation then it can cover the policy document it can cover the procedure document it also covers the process document then when we are talking about uh, the other admin controls like the hr controls and other controls then we need to check them those admin controls so that is also a documentation review process only right so that that is but we can we can call it as a real world assessment of the admin controls okay and then comes a the change management review whatever changes happened in the network so that can be reviewed whatever uh, the change man management procedure is whether everything is going as per change management procedure or not so the review of all these things is one part the second part is checking the technical controls in the technical controls we can say vulnerability assessment we physically we check that particular application it means via tools or manual process we uh, do the vulnerability assessment and then the finally the penetration testing and finally the security audit security audits means uh, checking for uh, the firewall checking uh, the ips ids their outcome whether they are implemented properly or not whether uh, the policies which is defined there whether it should be in the alert mode or in the block mode so all these things are covered in the security audit so once we do all these things we will what we will get we will get some recommendations we will get some suggestions whether those are from the auditor or whether those are from some uh, other location so all these are the recommendations only so all these recommendation we will finally put into a assessment report and all these assessment report we are going to have in our uh, this security assessment report so all these reports are in a very uh, layman language form and we can say we can generate two different kind of reports also one for the top management and one one for the developer side top management they are more concerned about the policy process and other things and the developers they are more concerned about the 
implementation of security in their softwares or uh, hardware we can say right so we can create two different kinds of but ultimately there will be a assessment report which is very important okay moving further is okay i need to check some of the uh, settings here just give me a minute i need to check whether it is working or not i think there is some issue with the camera let me figure it out give me a second please okay now now i think it is working yes it is working now okay friends so uh, i can say that uh, when we are doing uh, this uh, security assessment then we will use some methods to do uh, to do all these security assessment and to do this security assessment we require some met, uh, sorry to do all these security assessment we require some methods and methods here means either we can do some examination we can do interviews and we can do testing but when we are talking about examination examination but exactly we can exam we can exam the mechanism of the overall security implementation we can check the specifications and we can check the activities now uh, we need to understand what exactly mechanism mean, means what exactly specification means what exactly activities means but later on in these slides we will just check on these things but it is very important for us to understand that for the examination we can do the examination of the mechanism specification and activities and interviews can only be conducted on the individuals and finally testing can be done on mechanism or activities so these are the three methods examination interviews and testing to do security assessment so let's understand what exactly mechanism specification and activities means so for this friend i want to uh, say that uh, the standard this standard special publication 853a is very important to understand that is only for to understand i am not telling you to go in depth in the same i am just telling you that just have a understanding of this particular standard because this particular standard has given the definition of the specifications of the mechanism of the activities and individuals also in this particular standard you will get a list of the security controls as well as the privacy controls and how to access those, those controls effectiveness of those control is also given in this particular standard so if you are in the field of security assessment then it my recommendation to you is go in depth but if you are not in that particular field then just have an overview of this in the form of overview i have given these four definition out of this standard specification specification means uh, of the system being audited policies and requirement so we need to check the specification either of the systems which are being audited policies and requirements it means specification as per the policy and as per the requirement whether those particular systems are having those specifications or not so in any security assessment we need to check the specification specification as defined in the policies and the requirements and of the system which we are going to audit first thing second mechanism mechanism means the control which used to meet the specification so anything whatever we do uh, whatever we implement like implement we implement a uh, firewall rule so that is a mechanism mechanism of what to protecting any particular resource so to meet any particular specification the specification is that only the traffic on port number 80 will come to this particular server so via a firewall rule i can implement this particular control right so i can implement this particular uh, requirement this is a requirement okay so the mechanism is the firewall rule and the specification is means that only the port number 80 or the requirement is that the only the port number 80 of that particular uh, server the traffic will be accepted for rest of the port it, there there should not be any traffic right okay and then the third comes activities activities are the actions carried out by any individual procedure or process so these are the uh, actions done by any individual and what exactly individual means individuals are the people who access the system and perform the activities individuals also sometimes cover the services which are part of those particular system right so whenever we are going to do assessment we need to do the assessment of these four only 
first specification we need to check what exactly the specification given in the policy or the requirement or the standard is whether the system is having following all those specification or not second whether how exactly those specifications were implemented right or were uh, followed were uh, it means in that particular environment how exactly what mechanism were used to match those particular specification right and the third one is activities okay what exactly activities uh, different different individuals procedures and process are doing we need to check uh, audit that thing also and finally the individual the persons who are dealing with that particular system we need to audit their activities also so while you are doing any audit or while you are doing any assessment then these are the four things which you need to have in your mind specification mechanism activities and individual so it is defined in the nist standard 853 moving further i can say whenever you are doing any specification or oh sorry this uh, vulnerability assessment so vulnerability assessment is a part of uh, security assessment only so in vulnerability assessment there are four steps first is detect validate remediate and document so uh, detection means you need to identify any particular vulnerability in that particular system itself okay and validation means you once you able to identify that there is some a vulnerability in this particular system you need to validate that yes you need to assure it yes this particular uh, uh, this defect is there in this particular system or this particular vulnerability is there in, in uh, this particular system then finally in the third step you need to find the remediation of the same because ultimately in the assessment report two kind of assessment report are there so in one assessment re report it is mandatory to have a remediation of the same even if you are not going to give any remediation then you need to Uh, suggest some other way around on that right so remediation is the third step and finally documentation you need to document all those things together so that that can be given in a uh, presentable form in final assessment report right so while you are doing any vulnerability assessment then these are the four things you which you do in any vulnerability assessment so the whole process of vulnerability assessment it can be a automated or a manual process so while you are doing this uh, vulnerability assessment process first thing is you need to do a network discovery scan you need to know the uh, whole network first then only you can further do the uh, vulnerability assessment that's why for that you can use a nmap tool and you can use different different uh, uh, techniques like uh, tcp scanning tcp connect scanning tcp acknowledgement scanning or prismas Uh, scanning so all these are the different kind of scanning available which will tell us which are the num which are the ports which are open in that particular network so while you are doing the, all these scannings most of these scannings are based on the three way handshake process which we have already discussed in the uh, network domain uh, in that particular domain we have discussed that whenever any particular source and destination they want to communicate with each other then a source they will it will send a uh, sync packet right and the destination which uh, once it will receive that particular sin packet it will revert with a sin and a acknowledgement packet a acknowledgement and a sin, sin packet and finally the source a which is sending wants to communicate with b will send a acknowledgement to b so this is the three way handshake process of tcp so whenever you want to check any particular whether any particular port is open or not you can do a tcp sin in tcp sin you will just send a sin packet to each and every port port number 1 2 3 4 like that keeps on continuing it, uh, it normally whenever we are doing a scanning we can set all these parameter whether we will do the scanning only on the registered port number or all the port number one thing if we want to specify any particular port numbers only in a network we can also do the same so once we set do all these settings and initiate the scan then automatically it will keeps on doing all these things like and then we need to uh, select we can also select this also whether we want to do a tcp sin scanning a tcp connect tcp connect means a full the whole three way handshake process will be completed in that the third one is the tcp acknowledge it means the source only send the acknowledgement packet right and if the destination is not able to send any particular packet and then it will initiate the process again so it means it will just use the three way handshake process in that case also in prisma uh, uh, this uh, scanning the source will send a fin packet it means to close that particular push and uh, urgent flag so three flags it will set and then use those three flags to 
check whether those particular ports on that particular systems are open or not. So Nmap is a free tool, open open source tool, and you can check the open port, closed port, even the filtered port, and even you can check the banners uh, also using Nmap. Right. So this is. Uh, network discovery the second phase is the network vulnerability scanning so you know now you know what are the ports what are the ip address what are the ip address ranges in any particular network in those ranges what are the live ip addresses you know via network discovery scan and you also know now that these are the ports open in any particular network so you can say you have the list of the services which are running in that particular network right so you can run a network vulnerability scan which uses a database. In that particular database, they, they have all the signature, all the vulnerabilities associated to those services which are there in that particular network. And then it will verify whether those particular vulnerabilities are there or not there in that particular network. So while doing network vulnerability scan, there are some more terms which we need to understand like false positive, false negative, authenticated scans, and tools which we can use for uh, network vulnerability scan. So I can say that the tools are open base nexus these are the tools which we can use for ne uh, network vulnerability scanning and false positive as uh, we discussed yesterday uh, the one day before also in the domain fifth we have discussed about uh, false positive it means when vulnerability does not exist but reported by the tool then we call it as a false positive so it is positive for us but it is it is a false it is positive for us but it is a false that's why it is false positive Positive in the sense it is not having a negative impact on the overall process. That's why it is positive. False means it is not there, but it is reported. That's why it is false positive. False negative means it is there, but not reported. It means it is a false event. It is a uh, and it is having a negative impact. That's why we call it as a false negative. Vulnerability not detected and reported. That is a false negative. Authenticated scan. Whenever we want to do any particular scanning in any particular network, if we have the user ID and password of the same of the devices, then we can do a much more in-depth scanning of the same. And when we do such kind of a scan, then we call the, those scan as authenticated scans, right? So we can say it enables authentication for scans, which provide better coverage of the whole environment. But there's a, a, a negative also of, uh, <coughs> sorry, network vulnerability scanning that you are not able to pinpoint any zero day attacks or vulnerabilities right because everything is depend here on a database if the vendor whoever is uh, uh, from whom you have taken the vulnerability uh, scanning software like nexus or openwest then if they have not updated their database yet then you are not able to pinpoint uh, the vulnerability in your network so that's why it's very important to keep on updating the database before scanning just update the database and then only do a scan and even then just to uh, think in your mind that is there any zero day vulnerability if there is any reported zero day vulnerability in the nearby feature then just check with the vendor whether they are having the signature of the same or not right then we have web vulnerability scanning so web vulnerability whatever applications we are running those are the web application if those web applications are having some vulnerability then that those can be scanned via web vulnerability scanning so they scan all apps, whatever apps are there in the environment. And we can just uh, tell that these are the only apps or these are the only IP addresses or these are the only URLs which need to be scanned. And then we can create profile in them. Profile in the sense we can create a profile for uh, PHP servers. We can uh, create a profile for uh, IIS server. We can create a profile for, uh, I can say, any CMS based software. And in those profiles also further we can create authenticated and unauthenticated also right so while i am doing a authenticated scan it means i will give while creating the profile to the login window i can give a user id and password and then further i can keep on doing the process so once i do this process the tool will learn my user id and password which i have provided in that particular tool and automatically while it was scanning it keeps on doing that particular process right so i can say that uh, Vulnerability scanning is a very important part because whatever application is going to be live, before that we need to check all those applications. Okay, even if we need to do a vulnerability scan on regular basis also because new and new uh, the hackers they are uh, trying to get new and new vulnerabilities even if the software is old. So you need we need to do 
uh, regular basis vulnerability scanning in our network. And as per some standards, as per some, uh, I can say, regulatory authority, it is a requirement to do regular vulnerability scanning in any networks like the PCI DSS. They also want even most of the government websites, whatever are there, even the financial institu institution websites, there are some regulatory requirement to do regular scanning. And for uh, web vulnerability scannings, we have Nikto, we have Akinetics, we have Burpsuit, and we have WebPT. Now, all these tools, they are available in different uh, uh, way, like web-based tools and system-based tools. We can have in our own env environment also, or we can purchase them in the cloud also. Right? Then we have database vulnerability scanning. So that is only and only specifically for database, Oracle, MySQL, or SQL database. All those for those database, we have our database vulnerability scanning tools. So they will take the access of the database from the web application, and then they can affect the database security. So that's why it is a recommendation: do not use this tool directly on the production environment. Create a parallel environment of the production, and then do all these vulnerabilities. And even if while do, uh, you are doing all these testing, we can set some flags also. So wherever they will make any entry in the database. By using those flags, we can just remove those flags and then automatically we will have the natural database available with us. Right? So, and the uh, SQL map and is one of the tools which is there. Right? Next, we are having vulnerability management flow. So, whatever you uh, vulnerability assessment you are doing, you need to manage the same. So, there is a proper workflow of the same as per the NIST standard. So, the uh, workflow is First, do a detection, then validate your detection, and then search for the remediation, and finally do the documentation. So you can say in the detection is the initial identification of any particular vulnerability. So first time you find that for the tool report you that this is the vulnerability, then the application owner or the uh, you also you need to verify or you need to check whether those valid uh, vulnerabilities are there or not there in that particular server system or environment. Then finally. We need to check what are the remediation steps available to patch those vulnerabilities. So we can say patching is one of the uh, remediation or we can say configurational changes or deploying a new control is also a remediation step. Right? So we have NIST which is uh, recommend this security content automation protocol SCAP. So these are some of the uh, protocols which we need to know in terms of the exam. Right? In terms of the management uh, vulnerability management workflow, we need to know this. So the first one is SCAP. SC, SCAP is a interface. Okay. While, uh, in the last slide, I told you that uh, the tool will take the signature from a centralized source, right? So this centralized source will have it is kind of a database. So these tools they will communicate with that particular database. So there should be some databases, okay, by which with which these tools will uh, communicate. Now to create those databases, if we, NIST suggest that they can use SCAP. Suppose one country or one tool uh, vendor, they created their own database. So multiple if databases are there, we call them as NVD, National uh, Vulnerability Databases. So to have an interaction with them, with, or in the, with the tool and with the NVD, we can have this SCAP protocol in our environment. So we can say it is a vulnerability information exchange protocol. Uh, which will help the tool or the uh, some other application to exchange the vulnerability in between the centralized database and the remote database or the local database which we want to create in our uh, environment. Then we have CVE, which are a naming system and which describes the vulnerabilities. So the main role is port CV is naming and describing the vulnerabilities. The full form is common vulnerabilities and exposures. So it is very important to know. Then we have CVSS. So whatever vulnerabilities are there, we are giving a score to each one or to uh, each one of them depending on the severity level which they they can impact on so and the standard for the same is cvss common vulnerability scoring system we can use then we have cce cc is common configuration enumeration so it is a naming system for system configuration issue so system related configuration giving a proper naming to those issues is taken care by cce then we have CPE. CP is about the platform. So whatever platform we are using, whether it is a Apache platform, Windows platform, so whatever platforms we are using. So common platform enumeration, CPE, will give the naming for those, right? And then we have 
extensible configuration checklist, checklist description format XCCDF. So XCCDF uh, will specify the security checklist. So, the, uh, so this is the checklist and it will specify everything about the checklist. So we can see. Then we have finally the OVAL. OVAL is open vulnerability and assessment levels. So it is a security testing procedure by which we can test the vulnerabilities in any particular environment or location. So that's what. So these are the important terms which we need to understand and which we need to learn. Revise, uh, just revise them uh, on a regular basis so that you will be able to revise them. Then finally, this is one of the slide which is very, I can say, so many things are there in a single slide. The reason for the same is to understand penetration testing completely. Uh, we need to have all these things in a single. So once we are able to identify any particular vulnerability in any particular environment, then we can finally, what we need to do, we need to finally validate it. And penetration testing is a way of validation. We can say it is a one step above detecting the uh, vulnerability in any particular network. So it is exactly exploiting that particular vulnerability. So in pen, pen test, if you uh, use the actual exploit, then you can impact the uh, I can say uh, server. So that's why better to have a create, do not do it in a production environment, always do it in a separate environment, right? So while you are doing a penetration testing, the first step is planning, which is agreement on the scope and rules of the engagement. So in planning phase itself, you need to, uh, you and the vendor, whoever is doing, normally the vendor, are, if they are doing the penetration testing, then they will do, they will sign an agreement. They will know their scope. They will uh, know what exactly up to what level they can do at what date and time they will do. So all these things are covered in the planning phase. Then comes the reconnaissance phase. They will identify the systems by discovery, scanning, gathering information like the network scan we are seeing. And they, they will gather more information about those systems like uh, doing banner grabbing and all those things will be covered here. Then finally, they will do the vulnerability scanning. In vulnerability scanning, they will identify the vulnerabilities. Still, they have not done the penetration testing. Now, in the PT, in the uh, so till now, uh, here we are in the detection phase. Now we are in the validation phase. Validation means actual exploiting of those vulnerabilities, right? Whether it is via manual or automated process in some of the tool like Acunitix and in some tools, you will get a window. And whatever, uh, if you want to do whatever vulnerability that particular tool will report, you have an option to do a PT on the same. By doing this PT, you will get all the steps, you will get all the exploit, you will get everything on the tool itself. But still, you can do it in the tool, but manually. If you want to verify, there's an option of manual there, via that particular manual option, you can manually exploit that also. right? And you can see the result outcome in front of you itself. Then finally, the report. So whatever, if you have validated that, yes, that particular vulnerability is there in this particular uh, system, then finally you need to report that particular vulnerability. While reporting, you can give the recommendations of remediation, okay? And normally the tools itself, they have this provision of giving the recommendation. And even they have this option of creating a report. While creating this report, you can select two options, normal report or a developer report. So in developer report, you will get each and everything in much more detail, even you will get the screen capture of the actual exploit, outcome of the actual exploit, right? So you will get all those things also. But while doing pen testing, there are some hazards related to that. Sometimes the application can also crash. Data can also get corrupted. Even because of this, doing pen testing in a production environment, we can have a DDoS attack in our environment, right? So because the reason for the same is in pen test, we actually exploit the vulnerabilities. Right? So exploitation is not a hazard. The only thing is we using a production environment is a hazard. So we can say we can have three types of different types of testing. One is a white, port te uh, white box testing, other one is a gray box testing, and the third one is a black box. So white box is having a complete knowledge of the system, of the network, everything. So it just bypass the reconnaissance phase because I don't need to know the information which I already have. Right? So I, I do not require to do the reconnaissance stage. I will directly do the vulnerability scanning in that. Then it will increase the likelihood of finding security flaws and reducing consultants, consultant time and fees. So if we are already giving complete detail to them, like even if the we are giving the user ID and password, they will run an authenticated scan. And then easily the consultant can say, yeah, these are the vulnerabilities available. So it will take less time. 
and if less time means less money also then then we have gray box testing testing in gray box testing it is we are not giving the complete information to them some of the information we will provide so we can say running a authenticated scan without knowing the complete architecture of the whole network is kind of a gray box testing because they will first do a reconnaissance but we have given them a user id and password right then we have the black box testing in black box testing no one knows anything it means the consultant side so the if the vendor who is doing the pt and vulnerability assessment they do not know anything so they will just simulate an external attacker they will just say that we are an external attacker and this is the actual application we need to attack it so it is we can say it is a real world scenario and the result of the same will also be of real world kind of but it is very time consuming so we have some testing methodology with, with us and some standard we can say or we can say some guide guides of testing like web testing guide nist 800 uh, that is also a special publication only nist sp 800 115 then ossptmm redmap pentest and pci dss guidelines so these are some of the met- methodologies by from which we can take the guidelines or the we can say guidance for on doing pentesting and vulnerability assessment so if a pentest detects an active compromise suppose while you are doing a pentest in that pe- pentest itself suppose you are doing a manual pen- pentest itself while doing that that manual pentest at the outcome screen screen you are able to pinpoint that yes that is this result is also already there it means some someone already done a exploitation of that particular vulnerability in that particular system so you need to you need to stop that particular test then and there itself and then you need to report that also and you need to escalate the same to the security contacts right so in this particular slide i have already given everything even one of the tool uh, yeah tools things are also there metasploit is one of the best tool to do this penetration testing but we remember friends keep keep it in your mind using of such tools in any network is unethical and illegal also so that's why before using any of these tool better to take a proper permission from your higher authorities or from the respective third party for whom you are going to do this particular uh, right then platforms we have for pen testing kali linux and uh, this backtrack okay next is the bar games currently this is a very big concept across the globe going on that is of bar gaming bar gaming means the we will create two teams one is a red team other one is a blue team red team will attack blue team will stop right so we can say red team is a offensive team and blue team is a defensive team so i can say that to it will check the how prepared the security team is to test the same we can use these kind of bar games right because red team they will create a actual breach scenario that actually a attack is going on and the uh, blue team it is actually stopping in real time it is stopping those attacks right in that particular case you will get to know or the higher authorities they will get to know how prepared the blue team is okay as well as it will tell it will just give a idea whether the blue team is aware of all the process procedures policies whether they know the escalation matrix whether they know how to handle those attack whether they, they know the trial process and it will also identify the awareness level of uh, the persons who are in the blue team their alertness and whether they adhere to any process of uh, security operation team suppose security operation team says if such kind of things happen then you need to do this this so whoever is working in security Uh, operation team then they should be aware of those all those things then it will also help them to prepare for any incident handling in the future so suppose if such kind of exercise are regular in any environment then the team the blue team is prepared enough they know their roles and responsibilities in such scenarios they know how to handle the, such scenarios so they know how to do the triage how to do response how to escalate how to do the recovery so they because they have already gone through those processes that's why this bar gaming concept is a very good concept we can say so also it will identify the failures suppose anything fails then it will be documented that this particular thing failed so next time the higher management or the blue team they will take care of those things why that particular thing failed right so all those things will be covered in this okay moving further 
is security audits. So when we are talking about security audit, we can say that uh, audit is a validation against a standard. Like we validate anything with any uh, any particular standard. If we measure, want to measure something, we will measure it against weight. Weight is what? Weight is a kind of a standard, one kg weight. That is a standard. Same way in security, in audit, we measure anything. We measure the, either the performance, either, whatever it is. Uh, four things we have checked. Uh, we have discussed about a specification mechanism, then activity, and then the person. So all those four things we will just uh, audit. If we want to do the audit of those four things, or we want to check the working of those four things, we will check with some standard. That this is the specified criteria to work, and this is how you are working. So if you compare these two things, this is what an audit is. So it is impartial. Audit should always be impartial. There should not be any biasing or uh, there should not be, it, will, it means it should be an unbiased evaluation, right? To determine effectiveness of a control to a third party. One thing. So audit can be internal audit. These can be external audit or these can be third party audit. So if you are, if any particular audit is performed within the organization itself, then we call it those audit as an internal audit. So what is the benefit of an internal audit? Okay, the benefit of an internal audit is the person who are working in that particular organization, they know the organization structure, they, they, they know the network structure, they know the environment of the organization, they know the working of the uh, different people of that particular organization. So they can pinpoint in a better way, right? But they can be biased. That's why we will normally, we will have internal audit as well as external audit. So some of the things will be pointed in the internal audits and the external auditor, whenever they are coming, they are taking those pinpointed things of the internal audit and do their own analysis also, do their own audit also, right? And the benefit of an external auditor is, external auditor is coming from the outside. So they do not have any kind of biasing in between the teams, in between the persons, in between the different, different departments. So that is a uh, benefit of an external audit. Third party audit, when we want to prove ourselves in front of someone, then only we will go for third party audit. Like suppose I'm having a data center, right? So in that particular data center, I want to get some order. I want to take some order from the market, but in the market, it is a requirement that the data center who can uh, give these kind of services should be a ISO data center, or that should have a CSA implementation of the CCM guidelines. Right, that is a cloud control matrix CCM. So cloud control matrix, if it is implemented in your network, then only you can have this particular tender. You can uh, participate in that particular tender. So in that particular case, I cannot say, I cannot tell them that yes, I am, I am following ISO guidelines. I am a ISO 27001 data center. No, I cannot tell them. I'm, I have implemented CCM is already implemented in my network. No, I cannot tell them. So in that particular case, I require a third party. To do a audit. I need to do everything at my location and then I will ask a third party to come to my environment and test and check whether I have implemented whatever is written in those standard or not. Then finally they will give a certification. Yes, this particular organization or this particular data center is following these particular things, right? So that's how we, uh, that's why we require third party. Third party audit also required in case of some regulations, like if there's a PCI DSS, regulation. So I need to get my organization audited by a third party only. I cannot myself say that PCI DSS or SOX is implemented in my organization, right? So there are some auditing standard which we need to know. That is COVID standard. Then ISO 27001 and 2. One is for implementation, two is for, uh, one is for requirement, two is for uh, to get the complete details of those. And then we have SOC. SOC uh, is SSAE 18. It is having three, type one, type two, and SOC three. So type one is mainly for the points in time controls only. Type two is period of time controls, and third one is the third party service provider. But we need to understand the process, the life cycle of the audit. So when we are talking about the life cycle, we first is identify audit goals. We call it, call it as scoping. We need to create a scope, whatever the scope is, it means if I do not want my whole data center to be audited, because some of the services, I want them to be uh, get certified, right? So in that particular case, I need to define the scope that this is the area of the data center. Suppose I am having three level of my data center, but I, 
I just want to have a auto talk one part of the data center, right? So I can say, <coughs> sorry. So I can say, I will define a scope that these are the area, these are the structure, or this is the area, or this is the physical site of which I want to do the audit, right? So first thing is identify audit goals and audit for audit for what? So I need to give a criteria for the standard that I want to do an audit for ISO 27001, right? Then I need to identify business needs. What exactly the requirement for that particular audit is, and what exactly the requirement of that particular business for which I am going to do do that particular audit, right? Suppose it is a data center, so data center should be available. It should uh, uh, provide services. It should have uh, what kind of services it is running. Whether it is uh, giving some colocation services, dedicated hosting services. cloud services so we need to i need to identify the business needs then you need to determine what will be audited right will be audited means okay scoping we have done after scoping they have set some standard right they have uh, form some committee and something and then they have created a standard for themselves right internal standard for of that particular i need to go through that i need to check what exactly i need to audit because in that particular standard itself i will get the scope i will get the organization structure i will get the network structure so everything i will get from those documentation only then finally appoint an audit committee a audit committee will be appointed to look after all these things and finally outline a plan for that particular audit so date will be fixed time will be fixed team will be fixed everything will be and finally we need to perform that particular audit and then in the last we need to document everything whatever the outcome of those particular audit is so friends moving further the next topic is log management and review i can say that this is the detective control because when anything is happening uh, we talk about three things triple a concept of uh, cyber security triple a concept means authentication authorization and accounting so log management and review is part of the accounting process only and when we are talking about security assessment as triple a is part of the security so log management and review is a very important part of the uh, overall security process because if anything goes bad and we need to identify who exactly has done this that particular thing or we need to identify the source of the infection or source of the traffic then in that particular case logs are the things which can help us and if we are not having proper logs we cannot to do a proper analysis right so that's why log management and review is the process of checking whether whatever is defined in the policy procedures and document other documents for log management uh, whether those things are going on or not right so log review verify the security controls access controls are performing adequately or not one thing like from the security logs uh, from the firewall logs i can check whether traffic is allowed not allowed at what port it is allowed at what port uh, suppose in my documentation i have written that only and only port number it is allowed in my network so by the by checking the firewall logs i can verify yes the traffic on port number 80 is allowed for rest of the port it is blocked so log review identifies security incidents such as malware spread privilege abuse etc so we need to build some use cases on the logs and on those depending on those use cases or depending on those queries we will get a alert then uh, to do log analysis there is a very uh, sorry to do this log management we require syslog syslog is the standard to do centralized log management so on the port number udp 514 it will just collect the logs from the network network devices uh, system server switches whatever it is it will just collect on 5 udp 514 it will collect the log centrally then even the windows events it will collect those event also even we can use the netflow on udp port number 2055 for live logging of the application flow on the network. and there are some tools available which can work on those netflow and which can analyze those netflow and give us any indication of any infection or malicious uh, things going on in our network then the tools which we can use in log management and review are syslog server that is a centralized server to which everyone is sending the logs then a sim which sim is the uh, platform which will on which we can create some query we can run some query on that particular uh, logs which we have collected from the network and we can do some correlations among those uh, this logs and also we can create some use cases depending on those those use cases we can get the alert also right so uh, splunk splunk osim and arcsight are the example of uh, uh, sim 
and then we have netflow logger netflow logger they will just uh, do the network utilization logging how much network is you uh, capsa is a very good example of that network uh, uh, logger net netflow logger so so but there are some issues related to syslog first thing is it is in a plain text form it uses udp and it can be easily spoofed syslog we have option of uh, ng syslog so in ng syslog some of the options uh, we can just take like uh, we can encrypt the traffic syslog traffic we can use tcp and for spoofing also we can set some rules in that so uh, as a best practice we can say that uh, whenever we are doing centralized logging, logging then we need to take care of deletion and modification of the logs by that method because if they are able to reach up to the centralized level uh, then it should they can delete the logs from there also that's why the process at the logging station should be like that it should be write only there should not be any uh, changes after that right one time write that's it okay then also we need to keep some logs on the endpoint it means if even if we are taking a centralized logs then also at the end point from where we are collecting those logs they should have those logs in case the centralized server is down then those end point should have the capacity to have future logs as well as they should have the capacity to hold the previous logs so that even if i need to do some analysis i can act, uh, we can do that particular analysis on the local end point itself and we should use a western host western host is a system we have already discussed the same in our last topic but it will uh, suppose i want to collect the logs of a cloud server from the amazon cloud so uh, in locally in my network so if i directly connect it to my syslog server i need to a uh, outside internet that's why i will use a western host in the western host i will just minimize the services to a minimum then i will pull all those logs from the western host to my local sync and do the analysis whatever i want to do so log events could be false positive or low concern some uh, most of the times i can say but another security control block incident okay like uh, uh, i will take a example here so suppose there is a false positive alarm generated by any particular system or sim uh, use case then in that particular case we will do our analysis and after doing that particular analysis i can say that a security control is already blocking this and that is not reflected in these particular logs right uh, because these particular logs uh, their two firewalls are there so the traffic is allowed from the first firewall right and then it uh, it is passing through the second firewall but the second firewall is blocking the same but the log analysis of the first firewall will tell us no it is it was not blocked at that uh, particular port itself right so we need to check whether there is any even if there is any alert because of the same or uh, other uh, this uh, you uh, tools then we need to check whether there is any any other tools available which is further blocking all these things or not right okay moving further is the last topic of this particular domain uh, i am not covering the software testing topics in this particular because i have covered them in, i will cover them in the last domain only domain eight so security management process so when we are talking about security assessment without assessing the management process it is not complete that's why account management backup verification key kpi and kris are the important part of security uh, management assessment process so when we are talking about management then the security officer or manager they must periodically review the accounts for any inactive accounts for any privilege creep or for any uh, extra privileges to any particular account right so uh, we can say we can compare a list of privileged user against a data owner and business owner list of users who need the that particular privilege and in a bigger organization it is not to check uh, it is not easy to check each and every account then we can use the sampling sampling is taking some random uh, number of accounts right random people random amount uh, number of accounts from all the accounts and we can verify the terminated user that they should not retain so these are some of the specific uh, sorry st uh, statements which are given in account management all these statements and whatever i have covered in this particular domain today i have taken each and everything as per the examination point of view only so whatever is important for the exam i have covered all those things so backup verification we need to verify the backups periodically one thing backups jobs should be successful if they are not successful then we need to mention we need to mention the failure in the report as well as we also need to mention the reason of those failures and times of the backup should be mentioned in all the reports so backups 
we also need to check whether the backup is meeting the RPO recovery point objective, which we said that we should at any moment of the time, it, if everything goes well, then we should have the backup up to this moment. We are able to run the system up with this much of time difference, right? So that's what RPO is. Then verify by restoring the actual. We can verify, we should verify even the owner. We need to take the confirmation of the owner every time whenever we are restoring any particular database. We need to take the confirmation, confirmation of the owner, whether he is satisfied with the overall backup restoration or not. Then comes the KPI and KRI. So KRI, uh, it means to know the performance and to know the risk in any particular network. We use these two, these two uh, terms, KPI, Key Performance Indicator and Key Risk Indicators. So it means by checking the number of the open vulnerability in any network, by checking the time to resolve those vulnerability, uh, it means the patching of those vulnerabilities, then checking the vulnerability and defect occurrence and reoccurrences also, and compromised accounts software flaws detected in any pre-production environment and repeated audit findings of the same, uh, I can say gaps. So all these will have an impact on the key performance indicator and key risk indicators. So if I'm, I'm saying that uh, my environment is having 10 open vulnerabilities in this month, next month when I'm checking, then I'm having a seven vulnerabilities so I, I can say that my key performance indicator has increased but my key risk indicator risk is the number of if the number of vulnerabilities are more the risk factor will be more so the, so my kri will is coming down because uh, previously i am having 10 open vulnerabilities but now i am having uh, six or seven open vulnerabilities so my kri is down, uh, going down but my kpi key performance indicator my performance is good that's why i am able to bring the risk down then uh, with the intrusion analysis also, IPS logs, we can do the KPI and KRI because it will tell us that these are the attacks in your network, on your network, and these are the successful attacks, these are the blocked attacks. So we will get every detail in that. And by checking the antivirus logs, uh, how many systems got infected last month, how many systems got infected this month, and bringing all these things together right, in the report will make the final security management process report. So with this friend, I want to say that uh, this is what is in domain six of CISSP. And I have covered, I tried to cover each and every topic, which is important in terms of the exam. But still, I want to recommend you just go through other videos um, uh, in my on my channel. I have not uploaded so many videos yet. The reason for the same is I want you to go through the framework first. Once you have this complete understanding of the framework, then it will be easy for you. And I want also want to uh, tell you that I'm going to start a 10 days uh, CISSP challenge from this Sunday onwards, right? So, uh, the main objective of the same is covering the takeaways of from each and every topic and checking from that particular takeaway, what are the type of the questions that can come in the exam, right? So if any particular, uh, if you see any particular question anywhere in any examination, then in that particular whole question, the whole question is not important. If you are able to pinpoint any particular keywords from that particular questions, I am calling them as a takeaways. And those takeaways are related to some topic. Those topics are related to some domains. So that's why I have break the whole thing into eight days. Every day I will take a particular domain. In that particular domain, whatever the number of topics are, I will take each and every topic. From each topic, I will tell you that these are the takeaways. For each takeaway, these are the type of the questions which can come. Right? So I will tell you the concept also of how exactly you can pinpoint that what kind of question it is, what kind of questions can, can come in the exam. And finally, I have some practice material with, uh, with me. So you can just go through those practice material and prepare for your exam. Right, friends? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.